Hello everybody, this video is a tutorial on how to install the latest version of Coin Cartel scripts. If you're watching this video, you already know that, so we'll jump right into this to save everyone some time. First things first, you're going to want to make sure that you have some programs installed that the scripts in this video will rely on. Those programs are Java and an archive extraction tool. I'll not be showing you how to install those tools in this video, but they are very simple to use. You can just check out their uh, documentation online on their websites if you need help installing. I will be using WinRAR to extract archives in this video, but you can use other tools like 7-Zip as well. I'll leave the download links for Java and WinRAR in the description. Next, uh, you're going to want to download the latest version of the script installer. I won't link it here, but you'll find it in the instructions that I sent you when you purchased the scripts. There's a chance that when you download the latest version of the script installer, it will give you some warning regarding the file not being downloaded frequently if you're using Chrome. That's nothing to be worried about. If you prefer to install all the parts of the script separately to avoid using my download links or files, you can do that as well. I'll make another video explaining how to do that, and I'll leave the link in the description. Once you have downloaded the script installer, drag it onto your desktop. Right-click the archived zip file, then select Extract Here. This will extract the files from the archive into a folder on your desktop. Now, you're going to want to take the multi-MC folder that is contained within the folder on your desktop and drag and drop that folder wherever you want to install the scripts. That can be anywhere you want, but in this video, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. In your installation, you might want to put it somewhere where it won't accidentally get deleted or thrown in the trash, but that is up to you. MultiMC is a third-party, open-source, free software that has a lot of features that are helpful when running scripts, such as easy instance creation and a streamlined account selection GUI. If you don't want to use MultiMC, you can install these scripts to the default Minecraft launcher as well. I will be making another video about that. I'll leave the link to that video in the description as well. Open the MultiMC folder, then find the multimc.exe file and double-click it. This will install MultiMC within the folder where the multimc.exe file is located. When installing MultiMC, you will have to do some first-time setup, which I'll walk you through now. The first step is to select the language you want to use with MultiMC. I'm going to be using American English. Click Next after selecting your language. Then, it will ask you to select a Java installation to use. MultiMC works best with Java 8. At the time this video was made, the most up-to-date Java 8 version is version 291. So, I am going to select Java 1.8.0 underscore 291. You should make sure that the Java version you select has an architecture that is compatible with your computer. You do not want to use a 32-bit version while your computer is a 64-bit computer, and vice versa. To check what architecture you should be using, you can click the Windows button at the bottom left and type in system information, then run the file it suggests. You will find your computer's architecture listed next to system type. If your computer is 64-bit, you should use the Java version made for 64-bit computers and vice versa. While on the Java selection screen, you should also edit the minimum and maximum memory allocation fields. These fields will dictate the default amount of memory allocated to Minecraft instances held within MultiMC. I recommend using at least 2048 megabytes of RAM per instance. That's uh, 2 gigabytes. So, I'm going to set the minimum and maximum memory allocations to 2048 MB. Click Next after selecting the Java version and editing the memory allocation fields to your liking. The next screen is MultiMC Analytics. You can either enable this or disable it. It does not matter. Click Finish. You should now see a screen where the default Coin Cartel instance is pre-installed at the top left. You have now successfully installed the scripts. To log into your Minecraft account, click where it says Profiles at the top right, then select Manage Accounts. Click Add at the top right of the window that opens. At the time this video was made, MultiMC only has support for Mojang accounts, so if you are using Microsoft accounts, you should be using the default Minecraft launcher to run my scripts. You can find a link to the video tutorial for that in the description of this video. Each instance on MultiMC should be linked to a specific account, so each account can have its own individual and unique settings. You do not want to run multiple accounts on a single instance. MultiMC does not yet support setting a default account for a given instance, so you should name your MultiMC instances after the account that is meant to be ran there. I'm just going to be renaming this instance to example for this video, but you should rename the instance to be the username of the account that you'll be running there. 
One of the last things I'll show you in this video is how to set up a new instance of the script for a new account that you want to run. It is very, very easy. Just right click the parent instance, select copy instance, then type in the username of the account that will be ran on that instance and click OK. One thing to note about copying instances is that it will copy all the settings from the parent instance over to the new child instance, but there will be no link between the two instances afterwards. So, you can change the settings on the parent instance, and those changes will not carry over to the child instance unless you delete and remake the child instance. This also means that any account-specific settings on the parent instance will be copied to the child instance. So if you run the scripts on a proxy, you should make sure to change the proxy on the child instance before logging on to any servers or anything like that. Otherwise, you'll just be reusing the same proxy from the parent instance. At this point, if you are satisfied with the default pre-included settings and mods for the scripts, you can close this video and launch the instance and get started. If you want to tweak some stuff with your instances, then I will show you how to do that now. You can change the mods an instance runs with by clicking on the instance, then clicking Edit Instance on the right-hand side of the screen. Then, click Loader Mods on the top left of the new window that opens, and you can see there a list of the mods that are included by default with the scripts. In the description, I'll quickly go over the reason each one of these mods is included, and you can decide for yourself whether you want to leave that mod enabled or disabled. My recommendation is to leave them all enabled, as they all add something that I have deemed beneficial for scripting, and it's going to be easier to leave it enabled and have those features available to you if or when you end up needing them than it would be to disable the mods you dislike on all your instances, then you'd have to go back and re-enable them whenever you need to do so. All the mods that I have included are custom configured out of the box to optimize the positive impact they have in scripting and minimize any negative impact they have. You do not need to configure these in-game, they are already optimally set up for you without you having to do anything. Check the description of this video for the information on what each mod does. That's all that I have for you in this video. If you check the description of this video, there will be links to more video tutorials with these scripts. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on Discord at blitz hashtag 0387, or you can leave a comment below. Bye-bye.